Well, good morning. I got the uh, I got the 4440 with the loader on it plugged in. I got the 4440 with the blade on it plugged in. 358 has been kicked out of the shop. Actually got the backhoe in here. And I'm kind of hiding out in here right now because it's like minus 35 outside right now. So it's not the best. Uh, but uh, another reason. Well, why am I in here? Why am I in the shop? Why is the backhoe in the shop? Why is it tools all over the floor? Well... Let me explain to you Robin's no good, very bad day that he had yesterday. So we, uh, I had ordered up those injectors and they came in and they were sitting here for a while and the telehandler was actually running pretty good. So I just left it. Uh, then when I seen the weather coming in, that it was going to be cold, I thought, you know what, I'm going to throw it in the shop. The injectors are external anyways, so that should be an easy fix. And uh, yesterday was the day. I thought, you know what, let's do it. So anyways, I did get them out. It was, it, it was not as successful as, uh, as it may sound. But anyways, here they are. These are the three old ones laying on the table here. One, two, three, and four. One came out easy. Two was stuck in there. I had to actually build a tool to get it out of there. One was good. Two was stuck. Three came out easy. And four came out pretty easy. It was a little bit stuck. As you can see, like looks clean. All sooted up. Looks clean. And this one actually is rusty. So anyways, they're all out there, brass bushing, or brass washer, no brass washer, brass washer. So the uh, the tool that I made, and I'm not a welder, but I'm quite proud of it. So uh, just a, like a slide hammer with a little bit of a, a little bit of a groove cut in the bottom of it to slide around the injector and then uh, fit right in there. And then you go bang, 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 and out comes your injector. So that works. Now. Well, why isn't it all back together? Why is the roof off? Why is the coolant cap off? Why is the coolant on the ground? Why is it drained out? Why does it look like you're into a, into it way more than you need to be? Well, it's because I'm into it way more than I need to be now. So I'm going to show you something that is uh, not the right tool for the job, but it had a handle. And I was like, you know what? That'll work because I needed the length. So down in each one of these injector ports or whatever you want to call them, was that brass washer and it stayed down in there, but it was flopping around in there. So all I needed was the length. So I used this and I reached down in there and I hooked it and I lifted it out, lifted it out, lifted it out. This one that was stuck when I reached down in there cause I could see that there was a brass, looked like a brass washer down there. I reached down in there with this and you know what happened? Boop, it broke and I wasn't even fishing with it. like I, I wasn't even being aggressive with it. You know what happened when this broke? It fell down through the hole that the injector goes through into the cylinder and it landed on top of the piston and it was laying in there in the engine. So now what do we do? Well, once we're done crying and being mad at ourselves for using the wrong tool for the job, we go find ourselves a breaker bar. Well, I guess a couple of buckets first to drain the coolant out find ourselves a breaker bar and various uh, sockets and we start on bolt the tappet cover, valve cover, whatever you want to call it, take the rocker arm out, pull the rods out, unbolt the head, lift the head up, reach in between the block and the head with a magnet, fish the end of that tool out of there, fish around in there with a magnet for 10-15 more minutes just to see if any there was any loose pieces in there, get that all cleaned up, set the head back down, put the bolts back in just so it doesn't look like it's a disaster and then go to bed. So a job that was supposed to take an hour, two hours tops, took me, uh, well, basically 15 hours. Um, now there was a lot of like moments of self-loathing where I just stood there and I shook my head like, you know better, why, are you, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Um, also my air compressor has decided to not make air anymore. So that was good that that happened yesterday to just add to the frustration and disappointment and I can say self hate that I was feeling. Um, but anyways, I got that out. So fortunately, right. I mean, and you, you know, it's YouTube's a big part of this, but, uh, I've made some, some awesome connections. So my, my buddy there, Jeremy, he's farming with treasures on YouTube. I called him a couple of times. Um, I think we're very much 
kind of aligned in the way we see things and the way we do things. Now he has the added benefit of actually being a mechanic. So I phoned him and I told him the situation and I mean, he burst out laughing too right away. He said, well, that's a heck of a story, right? Because I, I seen a meme once on the internet that said every, every 10 minute job is one broken bolt away from a three hour or three day nightmare or something like that, which is actually now what this has turned into. It's supposed to be an hour or two to change those injectors. And now it's going to be stretched out most likely for a couple of weeks waiting on parts. So anyways, back to talking to Jeremy. I said, look it, I want farmer Jeremy's input and then I want mechanic Jeremy's input. Because one other thing that happened was there's a little banjo bolt that goes in here just for this uh, injector leak off line. Uh, that got stripped out of there. So I need that anyways. And I, I don't think anybody has that. So that could be here tomorrow. Um, and then all I would have to do is using the same head gasket and just bear with me, don't, don't cringe yet. Using the same head gasket and the same bolts, I could just, I could just torque it back down and I could put that banjo fitting in there and I could fire this thing up and see if it runs. Of course, that's the farmer fix. That's the cheap way to go about it. Um, what are the, what are the potential cons to that? Well, you break a bolt, torquing them up, your gasket doesn't hold, and you start burning coolant or coolant running into your oil or whatever happens with that. Um, and you gotta take it all apart anyways. Now I've already I've already been talking to Finning. They got a couple of, they got the gasket somewhere, just a head gasket. Uh, they got a set of bolts in Edmonton. They got that banjo fitting in Edmonton. So potentially by, you know, within three or four days, I could have new head gasket, new bolts, and that fitting. So for the rest of the day, we could, we could break this down what we need to get the coolant tank and everything off of there covered up and then in a few days have a new gas excuse me a new gasket new bolts and new everything so that's the excuse me the, the right way right to peel it off of there you know we maybe even take the head in and get it looked at make sure it's make sure it's all good things like that but uh i just i don't know i uh I know once you make one bad decision, you often continue to make bad decisions, especially if you push yourself like I was doing last night, because it was 1.30 in the morning before I got this back to where it was. So this is exactly how it should have been just to do the injectors, right? I should have had injectors out and in and wrecked that one fitting, because that kind of was gonna happen regardless. So I'm back to that point now, and now that I'm there, and I'm fresh, I'm thinking, you know what, I should just, I should just wait. I should order the, I should order the gasket set. I should order the new bolts. I should order um, that banjo fitting. And then I can just, because it's minus 35 anyways, right? So it's supposed to be minus 30 for a couple of days yet, or at least cold. I can, uh, I can plow snow once my tractor warms up. I could probably even do these wheel seals. So this one's leaking here. That's that puddle of oil right there. I could probably do the wheel seal while I wait. And uh, I think I think that might be the best. But anyways, dad's on his way out. He was just having breakfast. He's gonna look at my nightmare of a day. And advise from there. So let me know your thoughts. I know lots of you guys are uh, that watch your farmers and you're also mechanically inclined. Some of you are mechanics. So how foolish is it actually to uh, reuse head bolts and reuse a head gasket? And uh, you know, before you just roll your eyes and just think, oh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. There's a lot of people. And in fact, I was, when I was talking to Jeremy, he said the one guy up the road or where his neighbor or whatever guy knew him, he said he used to reuse everything. Like he'd reuse pistons and stuff out of engines and just switch them over and never told anybody. And he always seemed to get things done too. So it's not as insane as, as it sounds. I mean, we all know it's not the right way and it's not the best way, but it's not totally insane to think that that's an option so i'm gonna walk over to the truck here and see if that other torque wrench is in there and then i want to go and take my coolant tank off there because it was leaking anyway so let's see if we can fix that also worth pointing out is that my air compressor stopped stopped air compressing yesterday so i guess we need a new compressor part everything turns and spins but it takes 
five hours to air this thing up. So I don't know what's going on with that, but that's not good. No, there was another torque wrench here, but see, this is one of the things where you're still reeling from when you get all your stuff stolen is you don't notice that the one that the better one is not here. I don't even think this one works because I had it on there and I set it to about 25 pounds and it wasn't clicking. So that's a real good way to break bolts is if you're using a torque oh, wrench that doesn't still work. Still cold, still cold. Anyways, I'm not exactly sure where we left this, but uh, check it out. The wheel's off and the hub is out and uh, whatever you want to call that, it's all apart. So we got a, a seal to do in this one and then uh, a seal to do in this front one as well, which I did last year, um, but I never videoed it. Uh, that's why there's an oil spot right there, because that's where the cell hammer was parked, and that's why it's dripping down the tire there now. So we'll do that one as well. We do have the two seals here, fortunately. I did phone finning. So one of these little uh, banjo fittings, you see this guy? stripped out so they ordered me a couple of these i think they're coming from spokane washington they also ordered me a new set of head bolts and the whole top end gasket kit so that's what we're going to do i got the coolant tank off which also where is it it's over here it was leaking and i kept tightening the hose and it wouldn't stop leaking, so I wanted to see why. Well, look at it, it's cracked. So I'm going to see if we can repair that. It's one of those things where it only leaks when it gets hot or cold or vice versa. Anyways, um, it's nice that it's an external leak, though. I like external coolant leaks. They're easy to fix because you can just replace the tank or whatever internal leaks are usually whatever, a failed gasket, right? So that's uh, that's that. So we're making the right call. Uh, the machine's going to be down for the rest of this week, I expect. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday before we see all those parts. A couple pieces are coming out of Edmonton. A couple pieces are coming out of, I think, either Spokane or Seattle or whatever. Uh, so, not the end of the world. However, I'm getting kind of tired, a little bit burnt out. You can see it was 1.30 in the morning to try to get that injector out and in and everything else. And then, uh, as as you do, I just started making worse decisions as the as the night went on. Um, I mean, I, I really, really, I shouldn't have put any of this back together, right? I should have just left it apart, knowing that I was going to uh, get new bolts. But the other thing too, I thought, <clears throat> I don't know what I thought. I didn't think any of this. I didn't think anything last night. This morning, this morning when I got up. I thought, you know, if they had all this stuff, it would be a no-brainer. You just run in and get it. They don't have any of this stuff. And these cat engines, I'm pretty sure they're in like a ton of stuff because that's a cat slash Perkins engine. So they're in a whole bunch of, uh, they're not just in telehandlers. They're, they're in a wide variety of equipment and stuff like that. So you would think they would have some of this stuff in a place like Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie, uh, prides themselves of being like a hub of the north for oil oil patch activity and things like that and you just as the years go on they have less and less stuff nobody nobody keeps any stock so and it's uh stuff like that frustrates me because it's not like you know the the dash part of a of a of a th460b telehandler from 2003 like we're talking engine parts that are there's hundreds and hundreds of those engines around but uh, anyways, they don't have any of it. So it's all, it's all to be ordered and that's fine. We got the backhoe in here. We got the tractors plugged in. So tomorrow I can do a little bit of snow plowing, uh, help dad when he gets here to get this all back together. It's kind of a two person job because it's super heavy. Get that back together and then get this one beat apart. This one I've done before. So the kingpins, I think that's what they're called. They shouldn't be that hard to drive out. There are these these pieces under here. You got to put your uh, your punch in there and smack away for like hours until that pops out. But uh, 
this one I've done before, so I anti-seized that up really, really good. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, as you can see, there's some seals and stuff to do, and there's uh, leaking ram and stuff. So while it's down, we'll be able to fix most of this stuff, providing that parts are available. And uh, yeah, use the back out of load, tote some molasses, bags of feed, use the... Uh, 4440 with the loader on it to make feed and the other 4440 to run the mill but that's it for me so as always thanks for watching and we will see you all on the next one